Pretty even game going into this one. Hopefully Fnatic can shake off what happened yesterday. And they're going to start off with an Anivia ban as well. So interesting stuff coming through <laughs> from EDG, the word go. Yeah, very bold move here. It looks like they're going to try and cut down on the number of bans for the top lane and the AD carry role. Uh, we'll, they've been talking up this Huni versus Koro matchup because it really has come down to sort of the three kings of the top lane here at yeah. MSI. And that is Koro, Huni, uh, and of course, Marin uh, for SKT. Looks like we had a little bit of a bug they're going to hop out real quick and get Champion Select restarted. We did see that Anivia ban. You're talking about the top lane and throughout the season. <laughs> this bird, not then a bug. <laughs> yeah. Th throughout the top lane, we've been seeing less Maokai. Was played a little bit yesterday, but these guys are definitely going for that mo more top carry focus. Something where they can just get back in the game and help the team out and not be on an island. Yeah, so much Hecarim, Gnar, Rumble, all of these really big playmaking High teleport impact mm. champions. This has a lot to do with these champ these players though as well, because these are the Hecarim players. This is Koro and Huni. These guys love playing this champion. It's not necessarily a Maokai style. I feel like if they go back to Maokai, it's sort of like them conceding their power picks here. I think it is um, yep. going to be very important, especially since it feeds right into Fnatic's playstyle and how they really rely so much right. on Huni's teleports and the early success of those. And like you said, Kobe, it was a bird, not a bug. Anivio <laughs> was accidentally clicked. I was like, clicked. Mm, they are cutting down on the total number of bans <laughs> by throwing away a bunch of bans here on Random Champions. So there's the first no. ban. It is going to be the Sivir. Steelback will not get a chance in that. And really, Deft here and there on it, he's got other priorities for the AD carry, so he loves that ban. Right, so I was wondering if they would actually focus on the AD carry role or the top lane. Okay. Um, there are so many top lane champions right now that to pick and choose from. It looks like they are going to focus on AD carry. And one of the good things about about Deft picking Tristana earlier is that he didn't pick Jinx and he didn't ruin his undefeated streak. Hey, that's true, that's true. <laughs> so he could very easily go back to that Jinx. Uh, Fnatic have been first picking Urgot for um, Steelback, so this is kind of a self-ban here, yeah. uh, banning that away from Deft. They feel that EDG would first pick it since they started out with an AD carry ban themselves. And we'll see whether Edward Game actually go for a Callista ban or they just let Steelback have it. Steelback hasn't necessarily been the strongest Callista we've seen so far. But that's, that's we'll see right. they're not very good at playing against it, Edward Gaming. We know that. I mean, it's it kind of comes down to are they scared of the the lashback from fans? Just <laughs> if they let Callista through again and they lost to another Callista, they would probably never hear the end of it. But to be honest, Steelback's Callista not quite as intimidating as right. Banks. Absolutely. Seeing that Azir ban as well, maybe some inkling that EDG has. Febivin would want that. Haven't seen it through the semifinals or the finals coming out of the European LCS. I like right? this multi, multi <laughs> ban here though against Huni and Forbiven with the yeah, Cassiopeia. Make absolutely. sure you get that out of the way. And I actually like that against Huni more than Forbiven. His wasn't necessarily as impressive, but Huni went off on that champ. <laughs> and EDG do have a history of banning out the Cassiopeia. So a little bit of a scattered game plan here yeah. in the bans from both teams. Uh, dipping into the mid lane, banning out a lot of the okay. uh, control long range DPS mages. A lot of consistent damage mages taken out here. And the Kalista's actually left up, so Deft, we will see his hand at oh the Kalista. Oh my okay. goodness. So this, this is <laughs> the <laughs> yeah, style of big... his face. Well, he took a deep breath. That was like, very oh, deep okay, breath. I'm going to have to perform. Okay, Absolutely. and what, what he's thinking, what he's thinking right now is that I played Tristana yesterday. It was horrible. <laughs> and I've got to really pick myself back up. And if he wants to prove himself right now, why not pick up a champion that we haven't been very impressed with? Exactly. <laughs> and win on it. So right now he's going for the power play. I, right. like, I like the boldness of EDG oh, to go yeah. in this. And if, you, if he is an AD carry in the lane phase to take advantage of Steelback and Yellowstar, then Kalista's the one to do it on. Uh, and you can really take over a game from the bottom lane there. Also, Mako's Annie left up. If they kind of want to synergize that, you don't want to throw the little girl into the fight all the time. But <laughs> a lot of bands were kind of set to the wayside for Huni. We've seen t totally target him, and now he's able to pick up something with an impact. Right, on the other side, uh, of course, the first rotation here from Fnatic. They're going to be able to pick up the last remaining of those top three carry top laners. Yeah. Rumble for Huni, so that will be huge. Uh, the thing about the Kalista bottom lane also is that the ult can be used for disengage to save your support mm. if the inevitable teleport oh from Fnatic does happen goodness. down bottom. And so it's a bit safer, especially when comboed with Thresh. Yeah, and you see Fnatic, they're like, okay, let's go for some mid-game power. They've got the Rumble, they've got the Rek'Sai, side, but then if you want mid-game power, pick LeBlanc. <laughs> and so Pawn says, all right, I'll just lock that one right in. That's fine. Blind pick the mid lane, but I don't care. Yes, Pawn's LeBlanc, this is going to be very scary for Forbidden to deal with. Now. 
The thing is, they did leave Zed up, which is good into LeBlanc. However, it's hard to work that into the team. And you can't always just think about the lane matchup yep. here. Yeah. They do already have an AP top laner, so they could look for a way to work it in. There's also the fact that Rumble wants to be team fighting. He doesn't necessarily want to have a split yep. pusher on his team. They want to be using that equalizer and fighting around it. But we'll see what Forbidden does go with. They probably will save his pick for later. But we'll see. Steelback see. going, looking for a little Ooh. bit of that Lucian. Yep. Right so. now, Daylor are talking to both Fabivan and Steelback about this pick. And we'll see what they can come up with. The thing about Lucian is... The oh, he did it! And the Zed! Ah, I got him! Oh. <laughs> All right, well, I, we already went over the Zed, so time to talk about Lucian. Because the thing about Lucian is that at the pro level, at the very highest level, his landing phase, you live and die by hitting your piercing light through the minion onto the enemy champion. So you have to be very, very good with your early usage of the Piercing Light to land that for Hass, or else you're going to lose this lane. And the thing with Kalista matchup, she can sidestep your Piercing Light simply with her passive. Right. It's, all you have oh to do is constantly goodness. strafe as Kalista, and you can avoid the damage. It's almost as annoying as someone playing Odd Job in 007 Goldeneye. <laughs> Or Moonraker it's, Elite. It's a very frustrating matchup for me to play, but of course, never had much higher level. He was always banned. He was always banned. We do see the Maokai and the Gragas come in. More tank, more scaling coming out of the EDG composition with a bit of that fight from Pawn. If he can control the mid game, then it's going to be real easy peasy on that end. You, if this early game from Fnatic, though, can get control, if Rainover can get from lane to lane as he's been doing, and if it's Hooney, I don't know if it's going to be a long game for him. Wow. Oh. Oh. Yellow stuff straight in game. there with the Annie pickup Talking as well. Talking about there is, Mako. Yeah, there is so much mid-game power here, though. If they're, they're, they're getting a fight around that Tibbers level 6 mark, I don't know how it goes wrong for Fnatic. Well, Yellow Star, yes, he's very well known for this Annie, and he's going to make a lot of roaming plays. But if you think about the team fights, that's a scary pick. To pick Annie mm -hmm. into Maokai Gragas, yeah, that's a good point. Annie is very scared of large bodies. <laughs> and that, those are two very large bodies that were just picked up. A strong front line for EDG. What he's thinking is that he wants to get straight on Kalista, not uh, land the stun with the Tibbers, and be able to blow her up. That's fairly hard to do, but they do have the Zed and the Rumble, both for assassination. Both of those guys can assassinate the back line in their own different ways. I'm really excited to see how this Zed pickup works here for Fabivin. Mm -hmm. Unicorns of Love banded every single game. And something, you know, you think back to when Bjergsen got the chance to pick Zed at Worlds. He picked it, and then it didn't turn out too well because he didn't get to play it on the international stage with that pressure, with all that. Is this Zed still honed in for Fevivin? I love the Zed the block matchup. Yeah, oh, yes, absolutely. Zed does have a bit of an edge, but it's so exciting because we finally get to see more assassins again. We yep. were hoping for assassins with all of these great mid laners coming to MSI. We're going to see one of the best assassin matchups. See if Pawn can actually take it because they opted to ban out the long range DPS mages instead of Zed. All right, with picks and bans on the books, let us know who you think will come out on top. Game one here by tweeting at LOL Esports with the hashtags EDG win or FNC win. We'll add up all the results results as we get into the game and you'll be able to see your vote backing your favorite team here as we enter day two of the midseason invitational it is Fnatic versus EDG and EDG with some fantastic picks and I really actually like the Callista I don't necessarily like it generally in the hands of death but against I've this comp <laughs> if you're going for that bloodthirster hurricane build it actually works out quite well there's only one tank exactly the Cinder Hulk advantage goes to EDG yeah. in this drafting phase. Uh, Fnatic have reverted to an older pre-5.5 set of champions here. It can still, you can still pull this off, but it re-emphasizes the point that we keep bringing up for Fnatic. And this is this early game, and these yeah. are those roaming plays. The Zed and the Rumble have to have a good early impact because Clearlove and Koro are both going to scale very well as these tanks and we'll see if Yellowstar gets off to an early start. Has started the W for the stun. He gets Cash a money. That's beautiful. That's Belt Thief's Edge already getting stacked up. No problem at all. Yellowstar's playing so aggressively here. Mako didn't decide to go for anything there, but EDG just going to back off. Yellowstar going to get his mana back and his health there as well. Gets another potion out of that, 47 gold, so he gets to grab another biscuit. Oh ho. And he'll continue to spam as he heads to lane. It looks like we may actually get that matchup as well as oh. both teams head towards the bottom side. It is going to be nitty and gritty from the start. Febbevin starting off with the long sword as well to put pressure on in that mid lane. And we see the ring and biscuits from Pawn because he also wants to put pressure out. We've seen even Faker bringing out consumables in the mid, but we can see these guys want to fight. Right. 
All right, so plus for the mid lane. Uh, the classic double sapling start here to help out Pawn, give him an edge in this matchup. Uh, we'll see if he makes anything happen with the early level two. Because he's missing some of his mana bar right now, Fabibin should expect it, uh, should get caught off guard. Yellow Star getting there a little late to stop it. He oh, flashes he gets for it. it. Yellow Star getting himself out with a big smile ear to ear. So that flash, he not only got an experience advantage by sealing it away, but Deft and Mako already tanked the entire Krugs, the entire damage that the Krugs are going to deal. So they earned the uh, extra potion advantage as well for that support. So Yellowstar really helping out his bottom lane here and oh, making sure that level advantage clear not going love. that way. The classic clear love level two gank here. Nice play back there by Mako. The flash body slam with the exhaust as well. First blood again for clear love. Mako's burning down steel back. Unable to answer that one. EDG again with this play. Clear love did it on Sejuani yesterday. He does it again today on Gragas. This is one that you should actually be expecting the earlier ganks to come from, especially since Fnatic Rainover was the one to do the level two Gragas yesterday. Right. But Clear Love identifies, hey guys, Flash was just burned. This is the communication Perfect. they are talking about. Bottom lane immediately notifies him. He heads straight down the river. Really, really easy first blood there for EDG. Uh, and Yellow Star, yes, he got the crux deal. <laughs> But no matter how many times you call that worth, it is definitely not true. If you say it in old chat, dangerous thing. it's always worth. That's the rule. So we do have Rainover taking the blue buff here. He may actually be able to come right and route behind Koro. That's going to be the pop-up. Koro flash, but he still gets locked. It doesn't give him much distance with that slow one. And now, oh. wait a minute, they got a flash. Go Rainover goes down because of too much from the turret. Koro's passive Woo. was so huge in that exchange. And again, the flash hook still back. Dodges it nicely played. Yeah, good dodge there, sidestep while well slowed. Barely got out of that one, but you're talking about how high octane this game was going to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Very quick moves from both junglers. What you would expect from the Gragas and the Rek'Sai. Both of them on different sides of the map, but both connecting. Skirmisher already for rain over something we constantly see from the European LCS. He wants to be in the face of Clear Love. Already see him taking the blue and then to the top lane. As he comes back in, he's going to head towards the bottom side of that map and might have to provide pressure as it gets oh, pushed in. Didn't get that auto Nice job by Pawn, but low on mana here. Chug now his biscuits and try to get back up. He's winning that damage straight, though. Yeah, and this is what Pawn is fantastic at as well in the mid lane. He weaves auto attacks between everything that he does, even on these mages that aren't going to be AD scaling at all. He makes sure to get the maximum damage in these trades, and you saw after that, Auto was cancelled there by Forbidden a bit, unfortunately. Just managed to get a lot of damage back. This is why I really miss the standard lane games every now and again. Uh, lane swaps are fun to watch, but to really see the jugglers shine, standard lanes are definitely where it's at. <laughs> Rainover heading in to try and pick up some scraps here as well. Pawn, though, with both summoners uh, and control of the lane. Shadow being down. Uh, probably not going to mm -hmm. offer much there, especially since there's no flash on Rek'Sai. Yeah, a bit of wasted time there from Rainover. Oh, Rainover could have cleared that. Of course, with the Q on Rexai, you do have enough attack speed in order to clear a ward, but decides not to. He gets up. Then maybe he didn't see it at first because he no, he wasn't burrowed. You're right. So well, he steals this, and Pawn keeps safe in mid. And look at the reaction from Clearload as well. Yeah. He's got deep wards in the red side jungle now of Fnatic. They saw Rainover on the bottom side of the map. Now he's going to make his move top lane. There's the snare from Maokai. It's a little bit close to the turret, though, so... Yeah, Kara actually going down very, very low here as well. Hoonie, he's going to overheat. Nice work from Clearlock to try and save him. But the flame spin is burning Koro down. Twisted advance gets the kill. That was so close. That was uh, some very strong bait there. All right, uh, jungler number two. Literally, Ready, go. <laughs> literally playing with fire right now on both yeah. sides. Three to one, Rainover needs to make an impact. We saw versus TSM, it was very fast to the mid lane, but it's been clear love to make the first impact in this game. Oh, and now Rainover. With the distortion callback, just magically disappears from Rainover's sight on that gank. He doesn't stay on top of the LeBlanc distortion. Yeah. Also uses his unburrow on the minion. Yeah, the teleport, teleport coming, coming in, in from behind. It's but not even going to matter. Up the kill. 
Huni now trying to get the Flame Spitter down. He does Harpoon once onto Deft, but that's not going to matter. Deft on Kalista can just get out of that light crowd control. Quickly bouncing What's back. Do it? Now the hook from Mako, and he can't get any help from Steelback. He's already turned away from the fight, and EDG are picking things up everywhere now. Yeah, and Steelback managed to get out, but Koru decided, I don't even need to be down here. Deft's got it even after that dive, and man, Fnatic seem to be falling apart. All right, so action. That's the name of the game. Pond's going to go in here under the turret. Uh, I don't know why we're... Oh, no, this, this is, is not the... the game. Yeah. All right, so he, he went in full. Oh, but Deft picks up another one, takes the Lantern out as well. I'm and there's there so many this. kills this game. I'm there's no time for replays. <laughs> <laughs> they just keep killing each other. All right. Once they come up, they go up to bat, and they get another kill every <laughs> single time. We should make Everybody's an agreement, right, it. where we'll do all of the replays so, after the game. <laughs> There's no time for it right now. Exactly. We don't have to go over the plays in every single kill. What you need to have is just a tally by your side. <laughs> what's really important here is that EDG are coming out ahead in almost all of these skirmishes. Right. And the early teleport from Huni that we knew was going to come down bottom turned around by that Callista lane that we highlighted. Deft having a great time here on the Kalista in the bottom lane, already to the BF Sword, and he is destroying Steel back down there in CS. It's really everywhere that destroying has happened. Omnipresent right now for EDG with this team that's supposed to be scaling. They have grabbed somewhat what a heck of an early game lead right now. Pawn, and this is Death still on a champion focus in the middle. Play. One of the slipperiest uh, guys. Double roam. There's the stun. That's the death mark. They're going to need three now to finally take him down. We'll see if EDG can work anything off of this. But I think Fnatic executed fast enough to get back and repair. The roaming yellow star. Oh, yep, there. that'll do it. Got to some point. Rain over pincer movement. They've got double pink wards in the top side river. So Rain over knows he can come down that path. Great conversion there for Fnatic. But again, if we're keeping tally of all of this action so quick and... Uh, Dirty here for EDG. Still, very substantial lead for them. And this Kalista is going to quickly get out of hand. And the beautiful thing about Fnatic, though, is the fact that they're down. They're aware that they're down, but they've consolidated vision around this map despite that fact. So they may not necessarily get pushed further back because look at that river up the top side. I mean, they're not going to be invaded again. That's a good point knowing. to bring up. You know, we were looking at those warts that yeah, earlier exactly. in the day. Uh, EDG, well, Coral's going to. Yeah, Corey, he does have the ultimate there. He's stopping a lot of this damage, but he's burning down here again. But in the bottom lane, Fates calls me, popped Yellow Star, dodges out of the thing with a hook from Mako. Fates call not going to get the knockout, but he doesn't need it. There's so much CC. It's like a give it a go. <laughs> yeah. All right, so, um, Coral escapes with his life uh, up top. He was okay. Yeah. Uh, he's going to just uh, evacuate the top <laughs> lane here, and they're going to give up the turret, so no kill down there. But again, wards. Aha. We looked yep. at the ward stats. Uh, EDG have the most placed and killed. Yeah. So if there's going to be so much action like this, and EDG have the lead, they should be littering the maps with wards so that Fnatic's further moves will be telegraphed, and they'll be right. able to see these roams coming beforehand and prepare uh, appropriately. Yeah, this is the thing. But the other the other side of that coin is the fact that EDG don't care about the top side. They've got Koro. He's, he was put further ahead. He had two kills early on. He was losing in farm, but now that's completely gone. He's going to be absolutely fine. They're now looking for Dragon Vision, so they've got their wards yep. on the bottom side. They're not wasting gold buying wards for the top side of the map. Right. You never want to fight a war on three fronts. Yeah. And EDG know this. They have decided that the front they're going to give up is top lane. And they just tell Koro, okay, when they come your way, just book it. Yeah. We're, we're going to see that area of the map <laughs> it because happens, we're it. allocating all of our resources to the bottom side here. And we're picking up kills in mid lane and bottom lane, yep. plus the Dragon. We're seeing that Rainover still trying to keep himself in the game mainly with farm 51 to 34 still building himself up there but he hasn't been present for the team he did just grab the blue over on edg but they grabbed his and dragon so everything they're doing is just being hit harder by edg right now febivin trying to get his hands on pawn in the mid lane but clear love is also there he's going to deliver a nice belly slap and a barrel to take down febivin yeah, Rainover looking to try and come back in here. Pawn quite low at about 300 health, but he's going to get hit. There's the flash. Rainover picks up that kill. Clear up, trying to answer, and they just did not think Rainover had the damage. But this is the first warrior enchant that we've farming. seen so far, MSI, and it's working out for Rainover. There's a game to build warrior enchant. Oh, another one. <laughs> oh, oh.
Hoon. Hooney even. Oh my goodness, Coro looking for it. Gets the slow, Wait, but I think... He's got a speed boost, baby! <laughs> he's got the strain! Oh, That's it, God. I got hit by the harpoon. All right. Breather. Yeah, calm down. Easy, guys. We're Easy. all right. I'm so happy I Woo. have two play-by-play -play with me for this game. <laughs> 16 kills, 12 minutes. People are about to spawn, so expect more kills. That's Ready just the way this the tree. He got out. Woo. Have fun. Have fun. That was the most hilarious sequence of events. <laughs> <laughs> with Mako hooking in more than he could chew. Where do you think you're going, Mandover? Get back here, boy. Let's take a look at it, because this is how it starts play. out. He's got like four lives in this play. As you mentioned, the warrior yeah. came in. All right, here it is. Yeah, get back here, Rainover. Pulls him back through the tunnel. <laughs> but oops, he's got help. Hooney's the first one to roam. It seems like everybody in this game is forgetting about their lane counterparts when they go for roams. Second one here. Oh, there's the other top laner. And Juggler goes down. But the other part of the dive here from Rek'Sai, not only has Rainover gone with warrior enchantment, but he also has the Stalker's upgrade. Yeah. So minus 20% damage dealt for six seconds is huge for these duels, plus the true damage to burn uh, gives him a really, really strong dueling uh, power in this early mid stage of the game where we're seeing so many fights constantly. And those wards that we are talking about, they're nowhere to be found because everybody's too busy fighting. <laughs> yeah, and over MSI so far as well, Deft has had a deficit of being of um, CS at 10 minutes of 17.5 behind. He's now 50 CS ahead. He really, really wants to answer that statistic. I feel like that Trist matchup did not That help may not have helped him, stats. Kobe. <laughs> Most definitely not. Hurting the stats just a little bit. Well, we did hear EDG saying in their previous videos, they may be a team with two different languages, but they still know how to fight, and they feel they have one of the best fight mechanics between the five of them on the Rift. Right now, they're showing quite strong with Roman lanes and clear love starting everybody off strong. Yeah, the scary thing for Fnatic is that with, in all the chaos where their team is supposed to be the team that thrives, which yeah. is Rek'Sai and the Zed, uh, it's actually EDG who are thriving in the early game when it's really chaotic and everything's spread out. Well, it's also, it's not cha up, chaotic, really. They've, they're just, they're still taking down turrets. They took the bottom lane, they rotated mid, they're still killing It's not chaotic, things. there have been kills in all this three China, lanes every China, 20 seconds. China control, <laughs> this is what it is, China control. There's crazy fights, but still. What I, what I mean by control is when they group up, all right, the tank line is going to do a lot. Wait a minute, though. It doesn't look like Hooney's going to be the only one to go down here. They get out of the turret just in time, actually. And Rainover and Yellowstar just a hair away from getting a kill on that one as well. But Fevabin sits on a pink ward. This could be big for them if he decides to go in at the right time. He does have Mako to look for, but that could already be a first sure kill. Who will be the focus? Nice little CS by Mako there as yeah, they still hover the turret. That's the big old right there as Pawn coming through the distortion. That is a very, very patient for Biven waiting in that tri brush. He wants to find his way in. Mako still hasn't backed out yet. They see the jungler bottom, but they don't have two of their members. So uh, pretty hard for Fnatic to pull this off. There's the teleport from Hooney. They're going to force it. Can yep. Yellowstar get his stun? Rainover looking to come in, but Pawn is going to distort out of the way. Deft might need to get Lance and his Mako. He's moving pretty quick. Forced to use the flash. Actually, there's the stun as well. Death mark on the Deft. He's trying to escape this one. Beautiful exhaust from Mako, though. He does get the kill for Piven. Trying oh. to get out. Koro picks that one up. Rainover trying to do some work, but he gets destroyed oh, by Steelback. Pawn. And Steelback <laughs> finds his way into the fight eventually. And Koro, why are you not dead? As Yellowstar, you are not going anywhere, buddy. Pawn's got so much damage. And the double kill for Mako. 3-1-9 and nine on Thresh. All right, I'll give you this. Most of the chaos is coming from Fnatic's side of the game. They tried to force that without a Rumble ultimate. Hoodie teleports in, and he's just going to run at them with Flame Spitter here. Look at the cooldowns here. He does not have the ultimate. Yellstar gets the stun off, but they're dangerously close to this turret. Coming in here as well, you think, all right, it looks like it could be good. We do have Steelback coming in, but he has an Avarice Blade and a Scepter to the Bloodthirster coming in here from the Callista. So uh, he goes down without really being able to deliver or keep himself alive. The I think I can mentality just dominoes against Fnatic. The and kickback on that Light Slinger. He couldn't get <laughs> yeah. the, the light in the right direction either. How much Woo. light is being pierced. But the thing is, Koro also played that beautifully. He's a tank. He lost his entire health bar, but still survived. Almost.
Yeah, almost his entire health bar. Otherwise, he'd be dead. Since we're, my understand how it works. Since we have been looking at those, you know, sort of three kings of the top lane, yeah. Koro look, has been looking outstanding. Yeah. He had a really good bait earlier. Uh, you know, he, and he was the one to go with the more defensive top laner because now on Maokai. Got the second pick right. Uh, Huni was able to first pick away the Rumble. So big props here to Koro. Uh, well played. Oh. Ooh. Misses the chain, so it's fallen, but they are going to be able to take down this ward as Mako throws out a hook. Just a zoning death sentence, ladies and gentlemen. That wasn't a miss. Zoning death sentence. One of the few times it <laughs> hasn't broken out into <laughs> several kills. Anything can break out into fights here. It's EDG. If they put a ward down, they might want a full 5v5 five, 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 five fight over it. That's why these guys are so good at fighting. It happens that often. Core items now quickly completed. 17 minutes in. The Righteous Glory. That juggernaut as well coming in with Ninja Tabi for clear love. And we see the Zanyas finished up with the Bloodthirster. So these guys can really make an impact here. For having a late game scaling team, they're ready to go right now. Yes. Let's take this brief moment of respite <laughs> and go over the fact that when things do get a little bit more controlled, and EDG get to group with their front, with their tank line, it makes things very, very difficult for Fnatic yeah. to pull off these kills that they're looking for. It would have to be a miraculous ultimate from Huni on the Rumble in a corridor. And this is the beautiful thing to see coming through from EDG as well, though, is the fact that they are now looking like the EDG that was playing and dominating the split in the middle of the season. They're roaming around the map, they're taking right. turret after turret, and they're shutting the enemy team out of anything in their jungle. All right, I'm going to hold you to that, and I'm looking at a 23-minute Baron then. <laughs> All right, um, that's, well, still, that's a late impressive. Baron. That's a late Baron, but uh, A little possible. bit later. Okay. Oh, the shot. impressive thing was is it, that's when we saw them kind of be hindered by the 5.5 when the tanks came in. Yeah. And now they're playing the Maokai in like the Hecarim Rumble-ridden meta right now. So. They can still do it on that defensive edge. They can definitely still put up the kills no matter what they're playing with their aggression. The thing about Clearlove is he's playing Gragas, which is very similar to Lee Sin with how that play style works. It's knock out the AD carry, make stuff happen, and Clearlove, yeah. Lee Sin was his best champion. He had about an 11 difference. KDA on that champion. It was ridiculous. I mean, they look different. I guess Gragas put on a little <laughs> bit more weight, maybe. Gragas is definitely the Lee Sin of the Cinder Hulk. Yeah, Congo yeah, was. absolutely. So we have the Blade of the Rune King now finished for Febaven. They don't even have enough pressure to start splitting the map in any sort of way, though. Always going to the beat of EDG's drum here in one minute on to Baron. It's almost EDG's <laughs> prerequisite to get inside the base, and I'm pretty sure they'll be warding up that Baron as that minute comes. Right over play. gets played right out of the tunnel as he tries to make his way into the fight, and they are dead. going right through the turret. They'll be able to drop some kills. That second tier turret as well. Deft does have the mark on him, but it looks like he's going to live through this with that Bloodthirster sustain, and they continue. They're not even worried about this second tier. It goes down as an afterthought. This is fight. ridiculous. And Fnatic once again get wiped. Yellow Star is going to make it out this time, though. All of that with the turret firing almost the entire right, fight. Right. So EDG easily going to click pick up the inhibitor turret and probably the inhibitor as well. Death timers long enough for that because they died so close to the base. And that was so beautiful by Pawn as well. I mean, he distorts in, makes sure he gets as much damage down as he could. He was picking up turret aggro, but he didn't mind. He just uses the Zonyas after he does all of his work, and mm. he's A-OK. -okay. I didn't even, with all the action, I didn't even look one time down at the builds here. But the <laughs> Zonyas early from LeBlanc in the Zed matchup makes a lot of sense and makes those tower dives that much easier. Well, Coral, well, though, sticks around a little bit too long. Yeah, he might be in trouble here as he's trying to turn it around, but this tree is not going to last that <laughs> long. Man, that was a lot longer than even I was expecting right there, but Nobody's Fnatic spells. managed to get it done. So looking at the early game, oh, check this out, this replay first, to see how EDG just micros oh, in and out of this fight and not even worried about that turret. All right, so we're looking for, uh, oh, the Rumble Look ultimate the once down. So huge part of their damage not available. Got, did get a good flame, spit her off, but again, Fnatic's so far behind right now. Nothing to follow up on that death mark. Death's still on the back line. Look at the positioning. Pawn, clear love, Koro, right in the front. Huge tank line, and Pawn can go wherever he wants, getting kills. And the thing really that was beautiful, like, the thing that's quite sad here for Fnatic is that was one of the best Tibbers I've ever seen coming through from um, Yellowstar, right underneath the turret. Theoretically, that should have been exactly what Fnatic wanted, right. but they were just too far behind. Yeah, think about the follow-up there, hoping for the Tibbers into Rainover knockup, yeah. but he had just got flayed out of the tunnel, and so he didn't have the movement uh, to reposition in time. 
But really, they are being able to itemize very hard right now against Fnatic. A quick, six, uh, quick, quick silver sash, if you will, before ah, that hurricane. The Fnatic, Desperation. we will oh, meet the Baron. Or will we? There's plenty of wards <laughs> on it, and we don't have enough damage. So. Yeah, they're, they're killing Baron and a pink ward at the same time, wondering, I wonder whether they know that we're here. Yeah. EDG not even taking the time to collapse, just giving it a little laugh. Nice try, guys. <laughs> We're going to shove up the lanes. Yeah, and they're going to take that. this Good in a turret here as well. That's only one inner left, and Deft is going to make short work of that one as well. That is going to be the entire outer ring, outer ring, both outer rings of turrets for nothing here in favor of EDG. And they've also picked up that inhibitor from before. And Deft, it's sort of like they've forgotten he was on the map, but he's still here, guys. We're never going to come through and try and get something done, but there's a lot of turret damage here. From and there's a lot of Fnatic members as well. We have to see Huni going towards the top side. They now have to spread themselves out thin. It's not going to make a 10-second dragon any easier, so they might just have to give this one up as well. As they lose their blue, no resources are theirs. Yeah, you mentioned Deft. Deft is definitely the supreme power in this mid-game on either team. Yeah. He's already got the Quicksilver Sash completed for the mid-game Callista on the back of his seven kills. There's nothing that can stop him now. Even if you land the anti-stun, he's going to be able to Quicksilver faster then the follow-up is going to come. And if you don't land the any stun, then he'll just save the Quicksilver for Zed Deathmark, yeah. and yep. nobody's going to be even going to be able to assassinate him. So he has so many uh, moves to keep himself safe here, especially comboed with Thresh, uh, that it's really Def's mid game right here. And this gives a lot of other teams, you know, further in the group stages that have to play them pause for thought, because as Atlas said, you know. The Callista was not something that we really feared from Deft up until right. now. And they've used this strategy before. They've picked Callista to try and get it banned against them. That's what it seems like. His Deft has not looked the most impressive on that champion, but right now he's playing beautifully. I'd probably still ban it. <laughs> oh, not? looking for something here is for Biven. Does use the Death Mask. Nice use of the Zonius, but I think three members might be enough from <laughs> Fnatic, and Rainover pads his stats yet again. The quickest way to go back and buy your next needlessly large rod, I guess. Ah. <laughs> thinking on that one. All right, okay. Couldn't be bothered reading. Four, recalling. four, and eight for him. One seventy nine, still doing well in that lane. And to look how EDG adapted in the early game to grab that low hanging fruit. Yeah, Yellow Star got ahead, but he lost his flash. So they acted on that immediately, and then continued to snowball the game from there. That's something teams got to look at as well. Is EDG is going to react and go with what they think is right, and it worked this game. I think that's been one of the best things that we've seen from Clear Love. Uh, is the instant reaction yeah, right. early on in the game. And he's making sure that he's getting Def as far ahead as he possibly can. It even happened against SKT, except afterwards, Bang and Wolf just ran over that lane anyway. They sort yeah. of decided that we'll ignore the first blood <laughs> and we'll just destroy you anyway. But Clear Love going to clear out some tunnels here as well. This Rainbow time the Callista's on the other foot, Atlas. Yeah, it's exactly right. Def just showing his medal on that champion. Oh, Steelback has to throw the Bloodthirster in there just to keep alive for a little bit longer in these fights. Definitely not going to help him cut through Koro or Clear Love any better. It's only a matter of time now as EDG just continues their stranglehold on this game. Still up kills per minute. 29 kills in 25 minutes. Yeah. You don't really come back with this type of team comp from right. Fnatic. Um, unless Pond continues to do single man ambushes on four people. <laughs> Um, he has it, been known to do that, though, and EDG is yeah. just getting barren in the meantime. Except last time, they weren't taking an objective during it. I mean, that was just bad, let's be honest. We've all had those 40 kill LeBlanc games we just can't get to the Nexus with. We but have? then again, that game, when do you get your, your, your team wasn't carrying as well as you are. <laughs> so I think all of EDG is going to be knocking on the front door again very soon. I'm really looking fanatic. forward to that game, Riv. <laughs> You had those moments where you're so far ahead, you ask your team, you think I can 1v5? And they say no, <laughs> you take it as a challenge. Challenge accepted. Oh, it looks like they want this fight. This will also mean the Baron and oh, maybe Koro. seal the deal. Coral from the side. Fnatic not able to assess the fight correctly, and they lose Timbers immediately without it doing too much damage or stunning anybody. Oh. Yellow Star now calling shots from the Death Chamber, and it looks oh. like they're going to be able to clean this one up with a Fates Call, but they go back in. Yeah, Death looking to get back in on the Fates Call as well. Beautiful work jumping over the edge, and he's just going to kill for Biven too easy. Meanwhile, Bon on the backside is going to take down Steelback as he tries to relentlessly pursue away. And man, this EDG lineup's looking like they had some rest last night, Kobe. Uh-oh. Is Huni going to go for a solo on uh, Mako here? He misses. Ooh, oh, he's getting hurt. burned. He'll take the shot down, but 
He's going to be close to the ace as Yellow Star respawns. Still gets his target. Oh, Moody, yeah. Mission accomplished. <laughs> target down. He killed Mako. Yeah. Is, he just that, is that worth again? We type in <laughs> worth again, Kirby. But man, yeah, Deft uh, and Mako really showing in the earlier stage in the fight up by the red buff, mm -hmm. just how frustrating the Thresh Callista combo is with so many options for re-engage timings. Yeah. They just con the constant switcheroo there uh, <laughs> from that uh, combo is really, really annoying to deal with. You have to remember as well, this is Deft and Mako. This is a Korean and a Chinese player, and they are yeah. playing so beautifully in a lane that, like you said, requires so much coordination. That Fates Call, that re-engage to come through in that one, on top of Forbiven, who is a very slippery champion. Man, really beautifully done. They are hitting their marks for sure, and they do have the edge in this game. Almost able to pressure now onto a fourth dragon, which will be theirs. I don't know if we'll even get to number five here with Baron minions coming in through H lane. Here's that situation again. It's going to be a is this maybe enough, a 3v1, people? but this is going to be a slippery pawn here. Flame spitter from the side of Hooney, and he just quickly distorts back to the original W. He's and buying time for the rest of the team to converge. Yeah, Def looking to make his way in here. Oh, Yellow Star, the chains on him. Pawn doesn't even give the assist to Def as rain over. He's going to try and tunnel out. Koro with the twisted advance. Hooney just getting destroyed. What equalizer, ladies and gentlemen, is rain over. He's going to die. EDG, a huge ride now. 28 to 10. Deft tanking up the turret, which is still hurting him. It's a bit silly. So far ahead, so many wards on the map, you literally are able to play inside the minds of your yeah. opponent. You know their every move, you know what they're going to do, and it just makes the game that much easier for them. 28 to 10 here. They have as many kills as minutes just on their side. Yeah, this is 15,000 gold at 28 minutes into the game. And Eight seen turrets to nothing as well. This is very close to a perfect game, despite the few deaths, but you're not going to see an EDG game when they don't die a few times because they like to test the limits. So true. Also, one of the teams that do push in quite quickly once yeah. they have that lead, once they get that Baron, they'll finalize the game. Teams do not have a chance to really react to that. EDG is like a team that feels uncomfortable unless they have purple things spinning around. That's true. As soon as they have that, they're like, yes, we know exactly what we've got to do. We're going to finish this game. Get an anxiety attack when it yeah. plays off. Oh, where's my Baron buff? All those bags of gold are not comforting <laughs> enough. They're, they're 15k ahead. <laughs> no, need Baron. Need Baron. Okay. And fourth dragon. And please. fourth dragon, of course. Eight turrets to zero, that 15,000 gold lead, and now the fourth dragon of the game. A clean sweep here so far for EDG across the objectives of the map, and now they look once again, not really to spread Fnatic out thin. They're only going towards mid and bottom here, but they're definitely going to make their numbers smaller as they pick them off here one by one. Yeah, Karo in trouble. I mean, actually not in trouble, as Forbiven's in trouble, yeah. and <laughs> Clearlove does get the beautiful body slam. A little gonna, bit unnecessary. Gonna 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 pick trouble. up the kill. Yeah, causing some trouble, exactly. Rivington, man. Yes! Oh, that's first turret! Progress. Yep, don't even worry. This The comeback is real, ladies and gentlemen. Chain's gonna land on a rain over, though. He's getting punished for taking down the structures of EDG. Mako makes his way in as well as Vaughn. He looks for the reset of his cooldowns. Equalizer coming down from Huni as well. The rest of All Fnatic right. making their way in. Vaughn, he's gonna destroy a tunnel with his clone? That was cool. I did not know that could even happen as Tibbs is getting <laughs> it hooked up as well. Clearlove making his way into the fight. The culling just getting tanked like it's doing nothing. Oh. Still back sacrificing himself for the team as Deft. He's dominating now. Koro looking for the flank though. Is Yellowstar going to be okay as Huni is trying to get Who's out? the target this time? Sneaking What's out the of the fight. <laughs> oh, Pick up Cleaning up the minions, Koro with the Righteous Glory, not in range of Flash from Yellow Star, and he cannot get the Arcane Smash in. You Don't saw right, Cooney trying to this tiptoe out of the top lane there. Everybody trying, no, Cooney's still his blue down there. This time. He's got a sight set on the counter juggling. <laughs> And I think Yellowstar being 06, is he worth as much as Tibbers at you, the moment? You gotta Kari notice. Said, I'll take Tibbers right now, it's you, fine. You have to notice a smile on Fnatic faces as well. They but, understand but he did it. this game was not in their favor after those first few instances of EDG just grabbing a very big lead and working Snowball well. And Fnatic are, you know, taking this one as a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah. EDG aren't closing this game out nearly as fast as they could though right now. They need to be trying to do the best they can in that regard as well. I mean. The, or do the they? Length, if the, the length of a game does actually matter if there are tough oh, situations. That's, that's very true. That's very true. For tiebreakers, it does matter. If the point of this game is to intimidate the other Whoa, teams... I, I'm intimidated right now. As, <laughs> ...and show Def's uh, Callista, then might as well rack up a few extra kills. <laughs> I think the timing... Walk this way! 
<laughs> Get back here, no. Maker. There's the playback. Rainover probably not going to be able to make it out of this one as he's going to get rendered to uh, death. I, Mara was looking for it. I want a replay of uh, Def's face, <laughs> close-up camera, when he fates calls Mako's flash right there. Yeah, what so a beautiful cute. troll. Yeah. No love lost between these two guys. <laughs> so good. And I guarantee that I guarantee was that was on purpose. Yeah, yeah, that was 100% on I purpose. I think it was Mako going, oh, I'm going to do this really sweet death sentence. I'm like, gonna flash me, Death. All right. And Death is like, nah, -uh. <laughs> this is my show right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's going out of the Dex's turrets. It looks like EDG may be able to put the stamp on this game. Steelback trying a relentless pursuit, Corrin, but it didn't work the way he wanted it to. Cora was still outside the fountain laser and the Nexus turrets not long for this world as EDG looks to close out the game. Yeah, second Nexus turret now going down as the sapling comes through. Equalizer not really hitting anyone as Forbidden's just going to get destroyed. Deft is legendary. Yellow Star going to get melted. A double kill for Deft. Rain over in trouble under his Nexus turrets. Clear love steals the kill away from his AD carry. That is awful as He's going to make his way into this one, and the Nexus is falling down. Still back going to die, and EDG, this is what we were expecting for this team heading forward. Doesn't even die on the fountain, and man, that was a disgusting performance from the Chinese. They seem calm, cool, and collected. Another day at work, I guess, for them. Right. What That play? was not how they were playing. You just you go back there sitting <laughs> down, it's like, this is just normal. And they're playing as if like, they're having the best time ever. I think they stopped you know, really sweating about the game, about, maybe about 15 minutes in. And then they were fairly calm. Very well played. Fnatic with only a few chances to come back early. And that's going to make the game next to impossible when you have to say can continuously pressure on their snowball advantages. Yeah, Correct. that's right. But the thing is, like, Deft, again, getting that early lead, but this time EDG translating that into objectives around the map, into the plays that they needed, and making sure that they, they did it in systematic fashion. This is the EDG we're expecting coming into this tournament, playing the aggressive style.